According to Wikipedia, typology in Christian theology and in biblical exegesis is a doctrine or theory concerning the relationship of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Typology is very useful for grasping truths about the Catholic faith because it is both at the same time simple and profound. Through typology, people, places, and events from the Old Testament are seen as a foreshadowing or a prefigurement of people, places, and events in the New Testament. Typology uses storytelling to deepen our understanding about the Catholic faith. And this is much like the approach that our Lord took to explaining truth, as he spoke in parables and in stories so that everyone could understand. Please listen prayerfully and open your hearts to see the typological prefigurements that lie waiting for us in the Old Testament. Before we examine how Our Lady of Lourdes was prefigured in the Old Testament by Jeremiah and the Ark, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history, from their inception until their ending, is completely contained in the books of the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. The New Testament really contains our entire history from start to finish. However, the difference is that for the Israelites, their history is entirely recorded in the Bible. Our history is still being lived out. We are still in the New Testament even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. With that concept in mind, it becomes clear why Our Lady of Lourdes would be prefigured in the pages of the Old Testament. If the Old prefigures the New, then events in the history of the Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. It's not just people, places, and events from the pages of the books of the New Testament but the actual history of our church that comprises the actual New Testament. Now we are ready to look at how Our Lady of Lourdes is prefigured in the Old Testament by Jeremiah and the Ark of the Covenant. The Old Testament story about Jeremiah and the Ark of the Covenant is found in the second book of Maccabees. However, the story of Jeremiah and the Ark doesn't actually take place during the time of the Maccabean Revolt, but it is just a story told at the beginning of the second book of Maccabees. The Old Testament period in which Jeremiah actually hides the Ark of the Covenant in a cave is right before the Babylonian exile. Jeremiah prophesied to those in Jerusalem that the city of Jerusalem was going to fall and that her inhabitants would be taken into exile in Babylon. Since God warned Jeremiah in advance about the upcoming invasion of the Babylonians, Jeremiah was able to hide the Ark of the Covenant, Israel's most sacred object, in a cave on Mount Nebo. Not only did Jeremiah hide the Ark of the Covenant, but he also hid the Tent of Meeting and the Altar of Incense. Holy Scripture also mentions that he's concerned about the sacred fire of the Temple. Here is a passage from the second book of Maccabees. Now it is found in the descriptions of Jeremiah the prophet that he commanded them that went into captivity to take the fire as it hath been signified, and how he gave charge to them that were carried away into captivity, and how he gave them the law 
that they should not forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds, seeing the idols of gold and silver and the ornaments of them. And with other such like speeches, he exhorted them that they would not remove the law from their heart. It was also contained in the same writing how the prophet, being warned by God, commanded that the tabernacle and the ark should accompany him, till he came forth to the mountain where Moses went up and saw the inheritance of God. And when Jeremiah came hither, he found a hollow cave, and he carried in thither the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense, and he so stopped the door. For a video that illustrates all the amazing parallels between the Babylonian captivity and the spoliation of the papal states, follow this link. All the supporting scriptural verses and historical support is given in that video. The prophet Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. This is because it was his sad duty to prophesize about the destruction of the temple and of the holy city of Jerusalem. For a faithful Jew who loved the Lord, the Lord's laws, the Lord's people, and the Lord's house, the Babylonian captivity and the destruction of the temple brought unspeakable sadness. From Jeremiah 13, verse 17. But if you will not hear this, my, my soul shall weep in secret for your pride. Weeping it shall weep, and my eyes shall run down the tears, because the flock of the Lord is carried away captive. Upon taking the Ark of the Covenant and hiding it in a cave, the prophet Jeremiah prophesied about the next time the Ark of the Covenant would appear and would be seen again by men. Here is the rest of the scriptural text in the second book of Maccabees concerning Jeremiah and the Ark of the Covenant. From the second book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verses 6 through 12. And then some of them that followed him came up to mark the place, but they could not find it. And when Jeremiah perceived it, he blamed them, saying, the place shall be unknown until God gather together the congregation of the people and receive them to mercy. And then the Lord will show these things, and the majesty of the Lord shall appear, and there shall be a cloud, as it was, as it was also showed to Moses. And he showed it when Solomon prayed that the place might be sanctified to the great God. For he treated wisdom in a magnificent manner, and like a wise man, he offered the sacrifice of the dedication and of the finishing of the temple. And as Moses prayed to the Lord, and fire came down from heaven and consumed the holocaust, so Solomon also prayed, and fire came down from heaven and consumed the holocaust. And Moses said, Because the sin offering was not eaten, it was consumed. And so Solomon also celebrated the dedication eight days. And finally, there was another prophet in Jerusalem at the same time as Jeremiah, prophesying about the upcoming destruction of the city and of the temple. The prophet Ezekiel gave many prophecies regarding the captivity of the Jews and of the temple. In the book of Ezekiel, in the scriptural passages concerning the temple, he describes waters that come forth from the side of the temple. The waters started out small, but eventually grew until they were a large river. The waters brought life and healing wherever they went. From the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verses 1 through 9. And he brought me again to the gate of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house towards the east. For the forefront of the house looked toward the east. But the waters came down to the right side of the temple, to the south part of the altar. 
and he led me out by the way of the north gate, and he caused me to turn to the way without the outward gate, to the way that looked toward the east, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went out towards the east, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the water up to the ankles. And again he measured a thousand, and he brought me through the waters up to the knees. And he measured a thousand, and he brought me through the water up to the loins. And he measured a thousand, and it was a torrent, which I could not pass over. For the waters were risen so as to make a deep torrent, which could not be passed over. And he said to me, Surely thou hast seen, O son of man. And he brought me out, and he caused me to turn to the bank of the torrent. And when I had turned myself, behold, on the bank of the torrent were very many trees on both sides. And he said to me, These waters that issue forth toward the hillocks of sand to the east, and go down to the plains of the desert, shall go into the sea, and shall go out, and the waters shall be healed. And every living creature that creepeth whithersoever the torrent shall come, shall live, and there shall be fishes in abundance after these waters shall come thither, and they shall be healed, and all things shall live to which the torrent shall come. Now that we have recounted events from the Old Testament, we are ready to move on to the famous apparitions of Our Lady of Lords. Many of us are very familiar with the events of the apparitions of Our Lady of Lords. However, a brief summary would be useful for the purpose of this video, as well as highlighting some key events of the apparitions. Unfortunately, this video won't be able to thoroughly examine the events of the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes, but we encourage you to learn as much as you possibly can about them. On February 11th, 1858, in Lourdes, France, Bernadette Souberu experienced the first of many apparitions of Our Lady. Bernadette would have several encounters with Our Lady of Lourdes between February 11, 1858, and her last apparition on July 16, 1858 of the same year. The apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes occurred only two years prior to the Kingdom of Italy confiscating the Papal States in 1860. For a video showing the amazing parallels between the spoliation of the Papal States in the Babylonian exile, click on this link. On February 11th, Bernadette was walking with her siblings to get some firewood. She saw a beautiful lady that appeared in a deep enclave of a large rock. Bernadette prayed the rosary, and when she had finished, the lady vanished. From Wikipedia, Our Lady of Lourdes is a Roman Catholic title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, venerated in honor of the Marian apparitions that reportedly occurred in 1858 in the vicinity of Lourdes, France. The first of these is the apparition of February 11, 1858, when Bernadette Subaru, a 14-year-old peasant girl, admitted to her mother that a lady spoke to her in a cave of Massabiel while she was gathering firewood with her sister and friend. During a subsequent apparition to St. Bernadette, Our Lady asked her to dig in the ground and drink of a spring of water. St. Bernadette dug and was only able to find some mud. She did as the lady asked her and was ridiculed by the crowd for her bizarre behavior. However, the water that St. Bernadette dug up that day grew and it eventually became a flowing stream. The water was soon found to have miraculous healing properties 
as some faithful who approached the water were cured of their ailments and diseases. The water from the spring at Lourdes still flows today and is still working miracles. From Wikipedia The next day, she said the apparition asked her to dig in the ground and drink from the spring she found there. This made her disheveled, and some of her supporters were dismayed. But this act revealed the stream that soon became a focal point for, pil for pilgrimages. Although it was muddy at first, the stream became increasingly clean, and as word spread, this water was given to medical patients of all kinds, and many reports of miraculous cures followed. Seven of these cures were confirmed as lacking any medical explanations by Professor Verge in 1860. The first poem, the first person with a certified miracle was a woman whose right hand had been deformed as a consequence of an accident. The spring that Bernadette discovered is right underneath the church. The forefront of the grotto church faces due east and is partly situated on top of a large rock formation, with the grotto of Our Lady's apparition being at the bottom of that rock formation on the right side of the church. The miraculous spring of water that St. Bernadette dug up at Our Lady's command springs forth from under the threshold of the church on its right side. There is an altar at the grotto near the spring, and the spring flows behind the altar on the altar's south side. The spring flows east along the right side of the church and is contained by pipes so visitors can easily obtain the spring water. And he brought me again to the gate of the house, and behold waters issued out from under the threshold of the house toward the east, for the forefront of the house looked toward the east. But the waters came down to the right side of the temple, to the south part of the altar. And he led me out by the way of the north gate, and he caused me to turn to the way without the outward gate, to the way that looked toward the east. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And because Wikipedia doesn't have a complete account of the events of the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes, the source for some of the following information in this video is taken instead from the official website of Lourdes. A link to that website will be provided in the description section of this YouTube video. During another of the apparitions, St. Bernadette received a secret from Our Lady. St. Bernadette never revealed the secret, and as far as anyone knows, she died keeping the secret, not passing it on to anyone else. At another time, St. Bernadette was seen crying during an apparition. When asked why she was crying, she said that in the apparition, Our Lady was looking over her shoulder, of the, sh the shoulder of St. Bernadette, towards the east. Bernadette said she was crying because as the lady was looking towards the east, the lady was crying, which in turn caused St. Bernadette also to cry. Towards the beginning of the apparitions, St. Bernadette came before Our Lady holding a blessed candle. This was the start of the tradition of lighting candles at the grotto. In fact, if you have ever had a chance to visit the Grotto of Lourdes, or have at least seen pictures of it, you will notice the candles that are always present near the grotto. In fact, looking at pictures of the grotto, three major things are noticeable right away. Those being the statue of Our Lady in the Cave of the Rock, where the apparition took place, the candles that are lit in front of the grotto, and finally the altar that is present at the bottom. Near the end of the apparition, Our Lady announced that she is the Immaculate Conception. This most likely didn't mean anything to the young child Bernadette, but it was deeply significant to others. For just four years prior, in 1854, Pope Pius IX proclaimed the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, that Our Lady was conceived without original sin. 
And finally, the last apparition that St. Bernadette had with Our Lady was from a distance. The local police, in an effort to discourage people from visiting the grotto where Our Lady appeared, and in an effort to discourage people from taking the miraculous water from the spring, they erected a barricade in a blocked access to the grotto. Bernadette was not able to get close, but she did see Our Lady one last time from a distance. To see other apparitions of Our Lady that were prefigured in the Old Testament around stories of the Ark of the Covenant, please click on these links. Also, a future video will cover the parallels between Our Lady of Fatima and Jeremiah's prophecy concerning when the Ark will next be seen. Jeremiah said, And then the Lord will show these things, and the majesty of the Lord shall appear, and there shall be a cloud. And he also said, And as Moses prayed to the Lord, and fire came down from heaven. As it is well known at Fatima, Our Lady appeared standing on a cloud. And on October 13, 1917, a great miracle occurred in which tens of thousands of people witnessed the sun crashing down to earth. Now we are ready to see how the events of the apparitions of Lourdes were prefigured by the Old Testament accounts of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. The prophet Jeremiah hid the Ark of the Covenant in a cave, and when some tried to find the place where he hid it, he said that the Ark will remain hidden. And as far as we know, Jeremiah never revealed the secret where the Ark is hidden to anyone, and he died with that secret. During the apparitions to St. Bernadette, Our Lady revealed a secret to St. Bernadette, and as far as we know, she never revealed that secret to anyone, and she died with that secret. Immediately before the Babylonians came to destroy Jerusalem and to bring her people into captivity, Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant and he hid it in a cave. Only two years before the confiscation of the Papal States in 1860, Our Lady of Lourdes also appeared in a cave. Ezekiel was a prophet in Jerusalem right before the Babylonian captivity. One of his many prophecies was about a spring of water that came forth from the base of the temple. It was small at first, but grew very large and brought life and healing wherever it flowed. Directly beneath where the Lord's shrine was to be built, Our Lady instructed St. Bernadette to dig in the ground for a spring of water and to drink from it. It was so little at first that all St. Bernadette got was some mud. However, in time, the spring grew and became, and became clear. The waters from that spring can have miraculous healing powers for those who approach it with faith. Before the Babylonians came to destroy Jerusalem, Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant, the Tent of Meeting, and the Altar of Incense, and brought them to the cave on Mount Nebo. He also instructed that the Israelites take the sacred fire with them into captivity. Our 
When observing the grotto at Lourdes, one can immediately notice candles that are lit around the grotto, the altar at the bottom, and the statue of Our Lady which stands in the cave in which Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He wept over the upcoming destruction of Jerusalem and the captivity of the Jews. During an apparition to St. Bernadette, Our Lady looked east, which would, have been, which would have been towards Italy, and she wept. Only two years after the apparitions of Lourdes, the papal states were taken from the church, and the popes were described as prisoners in the Vatican. Jeremiah hid the ark in a cave to keep it safe from the Babylonians. Our Lady announced that she was the Immaculate Conception which was proclaimed by Pope Pius IX only four years before the apparition. Pope Pius was aware of Italy's desire to take the Papal States, and the popes prior to this period have said that the Church needed to have her own land so as to maintain her independence and to be free from pressures from the worldly powers. Could it be that Pope Pius IX proclaimed the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception before the Kingdom of Italy came for the Papal States, because he was worried that pressures would come for him not to proclaim such an important doctrine once the Papal States were confiscated. Our Lady's announcement of the Immaculate Conception from a cave is, tant is tantamount to her saying that the doctrine is now in a safe place. Once Jeremiah hid the Ark of the Covenant in a safe place in a cave, he blocked up the entrance of the cave so that no one could find the place, nor approach it any more. And at the last apparition, St. Bernadette was not able to approach the cave at the grotto because the local police blocked up the area surrounding it. 